Thank you. Okay, that's creepy. Um, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm we're going to show you guys our. If I can find it, let me make sure I got the right thing here. I'm going to try and show you my. Maybe that won't work. I'm trying to pull up my Gmail or my Google. Give me a second. Oh, desktop. I guess we'll try this. Oh, you know what? Is it showing mine or can you guys see my desktop? Yes. Okay. Now, can you see Google? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, perfect. It was acting different. So first thing I'm going to show you is we have a, a YouTube account, which is not here now. Um, and our YouTube account is going to have all of our recorded meetings and any anything you can think of. So um, if you go onto Google and type in WCTU bat work, the one with the circle picture of a bat or of a fish, not a bat. I say bat too much now. Um, my dad started calling me the Batman actually. Um, so that's fun. Uh -oh. But yeah, I know. So this is our channel. Um, and if you scroll down more, you can kind of see some of the things we've uploaded so far and some things that aren't related to us at all. But if you click on our channel here and you can go to the videos section and this has all of our videos that we've done so far. Um, you know, we have the two trainings from Luke and Aaron. We have um, my little short video about how to mark a site as resurveyed. And then we also have a the video that I did last for our last webinar about how to use the maps and how to submit a form and things like that. So it's always there for your reference. You don't have to dig through your email trying to find um, the video links I sent you or anything like that. You can always just go type WCTU bat work into YouTube and it'll be right there for you. Um, the only stipulation I'll put in there is for the uh, marking a site as resurveyed on TU Batmap. I don't have the password or username um, included in there because we don't want the general public having access to our, our database. So um, if for some reason you forget the password or don't have it yet, I can always email it to you or email you the document that does have that. Um, I know there's some new people and I've sent it out before, but they might not have access to it. So, or if you're old, an older person, it's still there too. So everyone will get it if you need it. Um, hey, Nick, one question before you start and just a, mm -hmm. something I just noticed because I went onto the bat team site and I don't know if we have a web, who, who our real webmaster is on this, but it reports it as unsafe content. And the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the map area or that, um, yeah, the area is, you know, it blocks out on mine saying Microsoft Defender has blocked this as unsafe content. I don't know if maybe that's just my computer or there's something about our, we don't have all the secure, all the right, so uh, it sounds like it's probably your your Microsoft Defender software, which I'm assuming is uh, kind of like a Sophos or McAfee or whatever uh, virus protection. Yeah. Um, I have when I'm at work, um, so I'm a food inspector, and when I type in the names of bars that I have to go inspect, um, our um, firewall blocks them because it's alcohol related, um, and I, and then I have to call IT and be like, hey, I'm a food inspector, I need to look at the bar website. Uh, so it could be something similar to that. I don't know what specifically they'd be picking up on there, but that's something that I can bring up with our um, website guy to see if he has any idea uh, on what your filter could be. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to go and report it as being safe. Yeah. I hope that, I'm that, not that doing will... something. <laughs> I don't, I, our, uh, our system has not been uh, attacked by a virus. So I think you'd be safe um, choosing that. Okay, thank you. And if you have yeah, any our, issues, our website guy is quite accomplished. He does this. He does this work at, for a living. So, um, I am very confident that our website is is secure. Okay, yeah. great, thank you. If you do have any more issues, though, just shoot me an email, and we can see if we can figure it out. Um, so I'm gonna get out of this YouTube now, so I have less things open because my computer will probably blow up. Um, 
<laughs> and I'm telling you, it's it's near nearing the end. So um, the things that we're that we're going to look at today is we're just going to kind of go over um, how to find culverts again. Um, it can seem like a pretty simple task, but when you get down into the nitty gritty, it can take a while trying to find um, a good set of culverts that you want to survey, especially maybe trying to find a string of them in a row. Um, there's no magical formula or program that you can like enter and I want like I want five culverts all within a mile of each other on the same road with nice parking and, and all of that. You got to kind of do the hard work to do it. Um, so our goal eventually is for you guys to kind of have made your own priority list uh, of places that you want to focus on. Um, you know, maybe it's a childhood stream you grew up on or somewhere that's near and dear to your heart for fishing and things like that. Um, we want you to start making your own list of culverts that you want to knock off your list. Um, and that's kind of in lieu of um, the various different sites that other outside agencies have asked us to do. Um, and I'm going to be reading off a little bit of a script here because I can't remember it all, but um, we now have a specific list of culverts that need assessing by King County. Um, and so for us, the, we, most of them are all private property and that's why they're asking us to do it because they don't really want to do private property stuff um, because it's not their, they don't own that land. So they don't really care too much about doing the uh, recovery of it or the assessments on it. Um, but creating linking uh, habitat where, you know, they might have King County property on one side, private property, and then King County on the other side, and a stream goes through the middle. There might be a barrier in the middle of that property that they're not going to look at. But if we go in and assess it, you know, figure out that there's an issue there, then we can connect them, that private property owner with the resources they need to maybe see if they're willing to um, restore it. And then that makes that stream passable for those fish. So. Um, King County has given us a list. We're working with the Forest Service right now. That one's a little more complicated, so we're kind of slowly working our way through that one. Um, they want to come shadow us and do a couple other things and look at our training and things like that. So we're working through that. Um, and then the third option would be what I was talking about, where you guys create your own priority list of places that you want to go um, and just start knocking them off, checking them off your list. Um, we. If you guys have other areas that you prefer to go other than what King County or anyone else tells us to do, let us know if you're having issues finding culverts and I can try and help you find some. Um, if there might just be an area where we don't have data for it and you might just have to go drive a forest road uh, and find, or uh, just drive a road or where you think, no, there's a creek and just start finding culverts. And um, you might have an unna unnamed culvert that's not in our database yet. And then you're contributing to our data, which is awesome. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to pick some culverts. So does anyone want to give me an area that they would like to find some culverts in? Anyone? Maybe a county or a city or yeah. what was that? Someplace in Snohomish. In Snohomish. Okay, we can definitely do that. So I am on the Washington um, State Department of Fish and Wildlife um, barrier map right now. Um, I use this one a little bit more because they have this query tool that allows me to um, find culverts either easier. I showed you guys um, that we're here last time this. Um, so I'll go back to show you how it starts. You start right up in this corner with a little magnifying glass. Yeah, click the query button and then go down to the bottom and hit all other searches. And then this is where you kind of can put in what you're looking for. Um, I'd love for them to have more things like maybe a watershed um, search or stream search or something like that. Um, but that's up to Fish and Wildlife. We don't really have any control over that, but it might be something we might be able to do on our bat map. So if you have recommendations on queries that you might want on our bat map, <coughs> let us know and we can work with the bat, uh, bat map gurus. So we're going to start with Snohomish. Find Snohomish. OK. Um, and then owner type. We're going to do everything except private. I don't like checking unknown. Um, 
I might do other, so I'll, we'll do it on this one. Um, unknown, just, you never know what you're gonna get into. Feature type, that's where we're looking just for culverts. This will get rid of all those walking bridges or like um, bridges that cars drive over, things like that. We don't want any of those. And it just significantly reduces the amount that we have, which is nice. And then let's see, don't really need anything else in here. And we're going to apply. And then it takes a second to load. Hopefully, there we go. Okay, take your pick. <laughs> the red one. Yeah, there's a lot of them. So I'm gonna kind of move this out of the way. So let's let's say let's let's find a good one that we can do or a good area. Um, how about we do this is Skykomish, right? Yeah. How about we do the Skykomish River? Um, do we want to pick somewhere along I don't know, Sultan, Gold Bar, Index? Uh, anyone? Gold bar. Gold bar? Yeah. Okay. They like me there. <laughs> it is nice having people that like you. Okay. So um, go when we're looking at culverts, we got to remember the things that we're trying to prioritize. And for us, is we're ideally trying to get culverts that were surveyed before 2012. Um, if WDFW had a query button to filter out those two th anything above 2012, I would probably kiss their feet it would be awesome but they don't right now so um so what you got to do and this is the, where the grunt work comes in is you just got to go through each one of these and start finding ones that were um surveyed before 2012 and you'll kind of start noticing that um wdfw or other agencies that have done these surveys and submitted the data um, they'll do them in big chunks so you might see an entire forest road that was surveyed all in one year or you might see like city of Seattle, I think they were all surveyed in uh, 2018 or 2019. I'd have to go back and look, but they'll like go and just knock chunks out. Like right now, WDFW is working in Kitsap County um, and they're doing a lot of the, the state, state routes and highways and things like that. Um, so if you start, if we start cl clicking in gold bar and we see like, oh man, every single one that I click was surveyed in 2008, you might be onto something. But if you see that every single one of them was surveyed in 2011 or I'll we'll say 2013, you're like, ah, that's they're all a little bit more recent. We don't need to do them. So this one, um, I clicked on this little green dot here, and it popped up with our first screen. It just has the picture of it. Um, this is a little concerning in regards to the query button. It's supposed to filter out these uh, um, crossings, um, the non-culvert crossings. So I don't know why it's there, but um, this is just a good example. It's good to check the pictures in case um, the query button doesn't work or something like that. Um, it narrowed us down to Snohomish, but it didn't filter out the non-culvert crossings. So survey date was 2011. So if this was a culvert, we could survey it. Um, and you know you can survey things after 2012. We're not going to slap your wrist or anything. We just prefer ones before 2012. And so does Fish and Wildlife. It helps them out more than not. Um, so that's a possibility there, except that's not a culvert we're looking for. Oh, you know what I did? I clicked on not a red one. So the red ones here are the ones that meet our query search. This little green guy that I clicked right there does not. So I'll hit this guy. Oh, no. It's still off, weird. I don't know. Might have to talk to our fish and wildlife people about it. But here's another one. Um, so this is definitely a culvert here. I'm gonna go to the next page. So this was a barrier correction. Um, it says barrier correction. Basically it means there was a bad culvert before and they put in a new culvert. Um, this one is actually a pretty decent culvert. It looks like we have our um, normal flow here so it's pretty decently wide so it's good for the fish but it was in 2014. Um, I've found that a lot of recently um, corrected barriers can 
drastically change um, in regards to like the bathymetry of it and all the how everything's looking just after a couple years. So if it, you have a recently surveyed um, or recently redone barrier or culvert, it might be good to go take a look at it and see if it's changed drastically from the pictures. And if it has, do a survey on it. Here's another culvert. It's going to go over to page two here. And let's see, this one was surveyed in 2011. So we're starting to see a little pattern here. There were a couple that were surveyed in 2011. Um, and then the next thing after you start realizing you're kind of in a good area where you have ones that are before through 2012 that I like to do at least is I look start looking for strings, um, things that are on roads. So um, this one right here, there's three in a row right here. Um, so let's see, this one was last surveyed in 2000. Um, so that one, could get surveyed. Um, and then I'll look at this next one here. 2000 again. Um, and it was surveyed by Washington Trout. So I don't know if that's us or someone else, but that's kind of cool. I don't think it would be us because I don't think we've done any surveying till just here recently. Yeah, uh, it, it could have been maybe some random club that called themselves Washington Trout. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then here, this other one was also surveyed in 2000. So right here, we have a string of three in a row. Um, if you look at our scale here, it's 0.4 miles for this. So I'd say they're all within maybe a quarter of a mile of each, each other. Um, so those are three you could hit up in walking distance and park your car in one spot. Um, one thing I want to caution everyone on is before you're like, oh yeah, I got three in a row, double check them again. and and check out who the owner is. Uh, because as we saw, when I filtered it, it didn't filter out some of the, the non-culvert crossings. So owner type here is county, um, which is exactly what we want. We want something that's Nick, not... just a kind of a question on, on mm -hmm. ownership. So, you know, a typical culvert's gonna go under a road mm -hmm. uh, and that road is probably gonna be, you know, publicly owned. Um, the property on either side of the road could be privately owned, but um, if uh, is it something we don't want to do to be, you know, in effect, you might be able to access the culvert um, from public road, from public access further down and then stay in the, the creek bed. Is that, um, is, is that just cutting it too fine? Because um, I, you know, I don't want to get any conflicts with property owners. Right. But it, I, yeah, so eventually we're hoping that we're going to have training and documents and fancy uniforms and all of that that will kind of eliminate any of those issues. Um, and we're working on that. We actually have a, a meeting tomorrow that we're going to be um, starting to develop some of that material. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, it's, it's definitely something to, to be concerned about. Um, we, we don't want to be stepping on private property owner's toes. Um, so my rule of thumb is, you know, if it's a culvert that goes under the road um, and I can, and it's just going straight into the ditch on the side of the road. Um, and you know, more or less, you can normally tell when it goes from like county property to um, private property, you know, private property, a lot of the time is going to be overgrown with bushes. Or it's going to have different landscaping. I just, I try and stay right at the entrance to that culvert. And if I have any doubt that it might be going onto private property, I don't go on it, um, at least until we start getting this training. Um, if you're lucky, maybe someone that lives on the property will see in your bright orange vest and they might be like, hey, what are you doing? Like, oh, you know, we're serving in culvert. Um, and, you know, sometimes we like to go a little bit further. Do you, would it be okay if we do that? And if they're like, heck no, just leave it alone. But if they're like, yeah, go for it, then, you know, I, I don't see any issue with doing it. But um, we, we want to be really careful with our private property owners right now at least, until we start getting all of our um, informational handouts that we can give you guys to give to them and stuff like that. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Cool, perfect. So um, in regards to finding the culverts, I look, like I said, I look for strings. I try and look for things that are in lines. That's usually what I, I the first thing I look for at all so if I'm coming out here, I see, you know, we got these three here, these three here, a bunch here. That's telling me that they might all be on the same road. And then I go in further. 
And as I'm looking, I just start going through and um, we, I got to figure out why it's not filtering out these non-culvert crossings. But um, so basically you're looking for strings and then you're looking for dates and then you're looking for ownership. Those are your three criteria that you can do before you be like, all right, I'm going out in the field. Um, you can find random ones that are all by themselves. Um, me, when I go do my food inspections, I try and pick like five inspections that are all like within a couple blocks of each other. Um, I just like making the best use of my time instead of driving from one end of the county to the other end of the county. Um, so that's what I do personally, but you guys are free to do whatever you want. And, you know, the goal is we want you to pick out a, a watershed or we want you to pick out a stream or um, a city that you guys are going through uh, that you want to go to and start making a list. Um, you can, when you click on your culvert, what I would do is I'd create a little Excel document, put your site ID in there and then get the longitude latitude of it, throw that in the uh, Excel document. Um, and then you have everything you really need to um, go out into the field and you can print it out, take it on the field and enter it in as you go. Um, Andrew, one thing that might be helpful in regards to the private property stuff is the, the Onyx app. Um, for those of you that haven't used the Onyx app, um, let me grab my phone. How do you spell that? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up right now because I always forget. <laughs> I think it's just O-N-X, but... Um, o -N -Y -X. Nothing, it's, it's O-N-X and then the word hunt. It's usually used for hunting, but the reason hunters use it is because they use it to look up private property boundary lines because you can't shoot a deer on someone's private property without the permission. Um, so I'll throw that in the chat real quick if I can find it. Let's see. There we go. So it's called on X hunt. Um, and you know, there is a subscription for it or you can do the free one. I do the subscription um, because it gives you a lot more data and it's pretty real time. When you pull it up, it'll take a second for it to download um, where you are and kind of show where you are. But the great thing about it is if you have an idea of where you're going to be going before you leave home, you can download an offline map. Um, and the great thing is it'll show you where you are on that offline map. Um, so you could be um, out in the middle of the, the forest and come across some private property where like, oh, there's a street address here and there's a, it looks like a house down that driveway and this culvert is right on the line you think. You can pull up the Onyx app, it'll show you right where you are and it'll show you where that property line is. Um, you know, it's, it's GPS and it's using your phone so I wouldn't, you know, play it by feet, maybe like yards. <laughs> just to be on the safe side if you're worried about an issue with a private property owner. But um, I use the Onyx app and the great thing is I preload all of my culverts that I plan to survey into that. Um, so it can, it's another tool for me to help navigate to those um, culverts on top of the GPS that we have in our kits um, in case I'm having issues with the GPS or I'm getting issues with the service of it and stuff like that. So you can also add pictures to it. Um, when you go to your site, um, you can enter in your site location on the Onyx app, take a picture um, and add it into that Onyx entry. Um, our plan is to hopefully um, have our own Washington TU Onyx account where we can add all of our culverts to it. So that way it's easy for our members to be like, oh, what did all the pictures look like for this site um, or this one? Or were, were there any helpful notes that um, the previous team might've had? That's something we're working on. Um, if you want specific help on the Onyx app, let me know. Um, I'm planning to make a uh, um, how-to video on it as soon as I have a little bit more free time. Um, but it's, it's a great app to use and I use it all the time. All right. How much does it cost? Oh gosh, I think it's like 10 bucks a year or something like that. I don't know, I, I have to check. I can look it up for you and send it out in an email. Uh, I'm resending out. Yeah, I don't think it's very much. I don't think it's very much though. I think I looked it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I think, think I, I looked it up. It's not very much. Yeah. I think it's like 10 bucks a year or something like that. Um, oh, mm, maybe 30 bucks a year, which to me, that's well worth the cost because it helps me out so much in the field, especially with those offline maps. Um, yeah. 
Okay. Hey, Nick, so, question for you. Yeah. Let's say we're doing a survey and you see one of the culverts is in private property, but you look over and there's a private property owner right there and you ask him, hey, you own this? And he says, yeah. And you say, mind if I do a survey on your culvert? Give him the old spiel. And is that not a good thing or? I'll, I'll let the, time? I'll let um, El Jefe, the boss, Steve or uh, Brad answer what, what we want to do on that right now. Cause the plan is we'll have a, that'll be perfectly fine in a little bit, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure what we want right now, Steve. I would say, go ahead, go for it. Uh, one of the big benefits that we're seems to be coming out of this is that we're having lots of opportunities to present to you uh, to the world here in a way that is positive and uh, uh, it, potentially engaging. Uh, I was just going over some material that uh, the uh, Fire Fish and Wildlife had put out and they basically said, absolutely, um, engage with the folks. And if you can find uh, an ally in there someplace, that's all to the good. Yeah, I'm pretty fearless, so I'm stupid one or the other. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and there's a, it's close, right? Which one of those is true, right? Fearless yeah. or stupid. Yeah. Just don't accept any candy and don't get in any vans. There you go. There you go. <laughs> still crazy, still bald, so that's where it is. Yeah, so, you know, go for it then. And um, if you guys, when you're out in the field, if you do come across any good networking opportunities for us, um, please send them our way. Um, we're kind of, we have a list right now of, of names of people that we need to get in contact with and people that we are in contact with. Um, and the more names we can add to it, the better, um, because it'll help our program grow. And eventually, I mean, ideally, we want to have people surveying all over the state and, uh agencies all over the state requesting our help to get these surveys done. And, you know, we've had a great start with King County and the Forest Service asking us, and we're working through that. So let us know and we'll add them to our networking list. And um, I think Steve and Brad love networking and I do too when I have the time to do it. Um, one more question there mm -hmm. for a request. Do we have talking points? Because every time we've done a survey, somebody's come up and said, what are you doing? And do we have a list of talking points or do we just use what we've got from the BAT website? Um, for now, uh, I think the best thing to do is just use what you've got from the website um, okay. and direct them to our website. But um, we're literally tomorrow starting working on developing things like talking points and things that we can give to people. Like we'll, everyone will have handouts that they can hand out to people that ask questions and things like that. Because um, we want to get the word out there about what we're doing and um, how good of a thing it is. Um, yeah, yeah. So, in the means, in the meantime, you know, keep winging it. But uh, we're developing everything as fast as we can with the resources we have. So we're uh, we'll have it, and I think it'll be really nice having that. Nick, if there's anything I can do to help on that, I, I was just thinking about this as a, you know, there is a, a state statute. Most of the states have them, the recreational use statutes which pretty much says that if landowners are, are concerned about liability because somebody's coming onto their property, you know, there is a statute that provides some degree of immunity for those property owners if they let people on their property for recreational, recreational uses. Now you, you tend to see this more with uh, lands that are gonna be owned by timber companies and things like that. But if that's something that you incorporated into any of your materials, that might provide a little bit more uh, help to uh, landowners who are a little bit nervous about somebody coming on and scrambling down banks and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, um, WDFW provided us with a bunch of resources. Um, that might be in there. I haven't had the time to dig through it, but if you want, please send me that, uh, any info you have on it. Um, yeah. And and we can, we, we can talk about it and um, um, throw it in there if it isn't already on whatever they've sent us. Um, Right. We just got to kind of compile everything we can and make it look pretty and short and succinct and all that. So thank you. All right. So who wants to give me a, a, another area to, um, to look at? I'm, I'm just basically kind of trying to show you what goes through my head when I'm looking through surveys or looking for surveys to do. Um, you know, there, there were a bunch in gold bar that we could have done or um, who's got somewhere else. Well, I, I don't, I looked, I was out, uh, 
well, maybe a month or a month and a half ago, looking at um, what's the creek uh, in Car is it Car Creek Park? Um, oh, um, in Seattle, Car, Seattle, Car Creek Creek. Yeah. yeah, it's not called Car Creek. It's called, uh, you know, it comes out right at Golden Gardens Park. Piper Creek, yeah, I think it's Piper Creek. Piper Creek, okay. I didn't have a chance. I, I actually got some great video of some uh, chum salmon coming up there, but uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't travel too far upstream to to see where the barriers were. Okay. So you said that was coming out at uh, Golden Gardens. Yes. Okay. King County. Good old. King Piper Creek, am I getting that right? Yeah. That sounds it sounds about right. I should know better because I grew up in Magnolia, but <laughs> okay, give me a second. It's loading. And then we'll zoom in and we'll see how this how this tool works for us. So let's go find Golden Gardens. All right. Is it this guy? Um, we have Golden Gardens right here. Let's see if we get a name. No name. No, I'm sorry. It's Karki Park. Oh, Karki Park. A little bit north. There we go. All right. Yeah, so I mean there there's some in here. Let's see what we let's see what we have. So this one is privately owned and was last surveyed in 2003. Um, you know, it's it's green, which means that it's um not a barrier. Um uh, usually. It looks like there's also a fishway. I mean, look at the picture here. So this is one of those um, yep. log doohickeys. Um, but I, I can tell you, Carkeek Park would probably be somewhere that um, I can, other agencies would love to get more recent data on than 2003. Um, speaking from experience, in seventh grade, I released a bunch of salmon there. Um, and I know a lot of other schools do too. So it um, might be something, you know, that once we get all of our private property stuff figured out, that might be something if you want to make that your special project, you know, take care of the Piper Creek watershed. Well, I can uh, tell you there were salmon coming up. It. Good. <laughs> uh, let's see. That, yeah, and if you look further up within the park, you can see that they have been um, surveyed more recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the second culvert up, it looks like, was 2019 um, by yeah. Fish and Wildlife. The other uh, one's up, too. Yeah. What about that red one? Also 2019. Uh, further up. Yep. Now, how did you get to the picture? Did the picture come up right away or is that? Um, usually the pictures are down at the bottom. Um, so you can scroll down to the bottom. So that's what, this is what that one looks like. Uh, looks like a wonderful place for a fish to live. <laughs> yeah, that one a little bit more, but. Um, so th this is one of those things I was talking about. King, uh, sorry, Fish and Wildlife came through Seattle, um, I think 2018 and 2019. It did a lot of the ones in Seattle. Um, so looking over here right next to Northgate. So I believe this is on Thornton Creek. Yeah, Thornton. Um, let's see, when did they come through? Yep, Fish and Wildlife came through in 2019. Uh, so a lot of the ones in Seattle, you can dig through and see if you can find some that were before 2012, but I think most of them are going to be right around the 2018 to 2019 range. Um, so it, and that's just something you'll, you'll start noticing like, oh, you know, the entire city of Seattle or like this whole block was done then maybe all the whole city was and you can kind of do verify by picking different parts in the city and if it's all done by the same agency in the same year, chances are they covered everything. Um, 
maybe not some private properties. And, you know, once we get to that point, then you could go into our query filter and just search for private property ones. Um, and because I can guarantee you most of the private property ones have not been done recently. Um, unless they're like very high priority ones for certain agencies. And then they might've gone in and asked the property owner. Um, uh, one more really quick question. If, if there's a culvert on a piece of private property that doesn't show up on this map, is there a way to add them? Or is it only those that have already been identified and been assigned a number? So um, two things on that. Um, there, can, there can be culverts that like private property owners put in and they just don't tell anyone about. Um, they're supposed to let, um, I, I learned what somewhat, they're supposed to let one a certain group know that they're putting culverts in, but you know, they don't always do that depending on where they are. Um, if you find a culvert that has not been surveyed or one that is undocumented um, and it's on, if it's, if it's on public property or owned by someone else that's not private, definitely survey it. If it's on private property, you know, if you are able to see the, the owner be like, Hey, do you mind if I survey this culvert? Um, go for that too. Um, at least until we um, figure out all of our private property stuff. Once you survey it though, um, you're going to have the issue. You don't have a site ID. Um, what you need to do is email me and I will assign it a site ID for it. Um, and then it will get uploaded into the database. Um, so the, yes, there's probably a lot on here, a lot of culverts that are not on here because they're just undocumented and agencies don't know about them and haven't come across them. Um, so if you find one that's like, you're like, this is not on anywhere near anything on our map, survey it and we'll add it to our database. Um, I think the more culverts on here, the better because it shows how significant of a fish barrier culverts can be. And the date, the year that you want us to focus on before, if it hasn't been, so it since 2012 and before 12 and before okay yeah because uh, i'm in, I, I'm down by burian and down in Bur uh, des moines and down south there's a lot that were done in 2009 mm -hmm. yep so then that that's definitely something you could do i've done um, a couple practice ones down in renton with some of my friends um i i know there's a fair amount down in this area that hasn't been done there's some over in the kitsap area that hasn't been done i know um, and then, you know, once you start really digging into the nitty gritty, you can find some that haven't been done. Um, and as soon as we get our go, our go ahead to get this private property stuff rolling, um, we'll be, um, it'll be free game to do as many as we can, um, because there's a lot that the, uh, Fish and Wildlife and King County and other people want us to do, so. Yeah, and these are all private that I'm finding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's it's a little tricky. You you gotta you gotta work on um, you gotta get the filters set, and hopefully the filters work. And if not, you just kind of gotta dig through it. It's it's it can be tedious, but um, when you find a good culvert, you get kind of excited because you're like, hey, it's public property. I know I can for sure do this one, uh, and this looks like a fun one to do. So, so uh, Carl Carl had a question on the private property ones that are known were they identified through the permitting system and process usually because you know, yes. i think okay yeah and, and I, so, I forget i forget who that is with but it's it's done through a permitting process um and i think steve yeah. was on a meeting with me with that i just maybe they remember who the agency is i just don't remember but so some somebody manually combed through all those records and all that kind of stuff because that i don't my limited understanding it's not always been a permit issue you know and then it's it's the size of the stream is this fish bearing stream you know people say no it's not so then they you know they're not or landowner he just puts a culvert in yeah so yeah. anyway it kind of it's a, it, a lot of factors are on how that how, yeah, right. how they get in or not you know if, if landowner yeah. puts it in they might not even report it but if a construction company does they might yeah. have to report it so yeah. Okay. But that you asked the question is like it, it has its basis and roots in that in that whole permitting system. Mm -hmm. Really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I'll say this, there's a lot of the agencies, they have their own kind of culvert type databases. Um, Fish and Wildlife, for example, or sorry, US Forest Service, they have their own kind of culvert database for 
at least the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest. And it is different, um, but it's also technically connected with fish and wildlife. And they're not really sure if when fish and wildlife enters new ones, new ones in, if it updates theirs and vice versa, but there's some connectivity between all of them. And I just don't know if they've worked it all out yet, but um, that's hopeful. I'm hoping that's something we can help the forest service with um, as we go along. So um, we, we have 18 minutes left before um, I got to start getting ready for bed more or less. <laughs> Um, cause I got to wake up early for work, but, um, does anyone have any specific questions or things that they need help with, um, wh whether it be submitting forms or marking things as resurveyed or just general surveying questions or even one, more of this? I'm sorry. I was, I was wondering, um, as far as a strategy goes on these, it seems like you would want to, um, to do the, the furthest downstream culverts. On a, on a stream first, you know, open things up closer to the source of where the fish are going to be coming from. Is that, I mean, I guess we do whatever we can find, but uh, it just seems like that would be a strategy, you know, makes sense to me anyway. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, in, in the end, we'd love to get the whole stream, right? Um, okay. But, you know, if, if you only have time to do one, uh, well, personally, if you only have time to do one culvert, um, and you, you got to get in and out quick. I'd try and find the one with the closest parking, but, um, <laughs> but, um, if you're looking at trying to restore a watershed and, um, all of that, all those metrics, then yes, you want to try and start at the bottom and work your way up. Um, because there's no way a fish can get to halfway up the stream to a, a culvert that you repaired when there's five culverts before it that are completely blocked. Uh, we hope that the people uh, figuring out which culverts to repair first are taking that into account, that it would make most sense to repair the most downstream culverts first. Sure. Um, I think as far as assessing goes, it's not that critical for us because, you know, we're just assessing they actually need to be repaired. But, um, but hopefully the people who are, are, are figuring out which ones to repair are, uh, are taking that into account. They, they are, um, and it's they, uh, kind of the school of hard knocks. The legislative uh, folks were pretty critical of them at a couple of points in the last couple of years for, in fact, uh, investing in the, you know, the, the money to re replace culverts that were upstream of culverts that were blocks. And they took a lot of heat, of heat for that. So, yeah, they're very sensitive about that. <clears throat> yeah. That sounds so, like a legitimate thing to complain about, too, though. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sure. Yeah. So Nick, before we go on, let me have a few minutes here to talk about something different and then we can come back to get any last minute questions if that's yeah. okay. Take it away. Um, I, I think all of you are aware that uh, work goes on in the background for activities such as this to take place. Um, and like I know Steve, Steve is head of the conservation committee. Nick has gotten involved. I am I'm state chair, and with like with any volunteer organization, we are um, always on the lookout for people to uh, step up and do work um, to help us out. What I am going to be doing, I'm going to be contacting some of you, and I'm not looking for people to just jump and volunteer for things that they don't understand because I wouldn't volunteer for something I didn't understand either. But I am gonna be having uh, chats with, with some folks. And what I'm looking for is like five or six people who will uh, volunteer just to get more information, uh, not volunteer to, to jump into something, but, but to get more information on what we're doing at the state level, the kinds of um, activities we're taking on, uh, the work that goes on behind the scenes and, um, so that you can get a better idea of what what goes on and find out if there's some areas that you would like to volunteer in to help us um, continue our activities because we're doing advocacy at the state level um, trying to uh, work in olympia and also with local governments we are doing other conservation work besides what we're doing on the barrier assessment and the wood debris 
Um, we are doing fundraising because obviously uh, funds are important to what we're doing. Um, you know, there's, there's a number of things going on. And um, I certainly don't want to scare anybody off. And I'm certainly not going to twist anybody's arm. Uh, that's not my style at all. But as you can all imagine, you know, any kind of organization needs uh, people to get things done. And so if you get a phone call from me in the next few days or in the next couple of weeks, um, you know, please answer <laughs> and we'll have a chat. And if you're interested, I'll just say, uh, like I said, I'm not going to twist your arm to do anything, but I would like to find some people who were willing to learn more about what we're doing um, so that we can uh, keep Trout Unlimited in Washington healthy and growing and moving forward. Hey, Brad, it's Andrew. If you don't call me, I will break your arm. I won't twist it. I'll break your arm. Okay, Andrew, I will give you a call. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So does anyone have any uh, last minute questions before I kind of just tell you what, what I plan to do after this? The, the only... Uh... The only question I had is I realized right before this call, so I had entered data on one site and I hadn't really found out if it had been sort of approved, scrubbed, quality controlled, et cetera. Um, I suppose I could go back and look and see if it compares to my notes. Um, but um, is there a communication back from you guys after we've submitted something? Um, so that, that's a great question. Um... We had a, some issues the last, um, probably like last month with some of our culvert submissions, not at least being sent to me, Brad and Steve. Um, we, we're supposed to receive a notification when you submit them. So what we're gonna do is, is we're actually going to download um, all the submissions that we've received so far and um, send out a list of them to the, to the group. Um, and if you don't see yours on there, um, let us know. Um, in regards to just specific what your, your question is, um, if you want us to, to let you know, like, yes, everything looks good, we can definitely do that. Um, at some point, you know, once we get 100 volunteers or something like that, ideally, <laughs> um, that might not be possible because we might be getting so many. But um, we'll definitely reach out to you if we have issues or questions in regards to your submission. Um, but at the moment, if everything looks good, we're just going to put it in our file of things that we need to send to Fish and Wildlife once we have a, 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 good, a good group of them to send off. Um, yeah, if, Nick, I think it would be a good idea to pull all the ones that we've got so that mm -hmm. this is a good point to, I think, to do a double check to make sure that, because I know that I submitted a couple that didn't come back through. Right. So I'd like to check those too. Yep. I can make that happen. Thank you, sir um so what what i'll tell everyone um i'm going to send out an email tonight just with the, the link to our youtube just for those the people that weren't on this meeting um they can have access to it um and you guys can also have it just in your emails um one thing i'm going to i'm working on is a list of culverts um i have a list of maybe like 40 or so culverts that i've identified in i think primarily just king county that um are surveyable before 2012 and they are um, not on private property. So if you really just don't wanna go through, sorry, grandfather clock in the background. Um, if you really don't wanna go through and like try and find some sur surveys, uh, some culverts to survey, you can go off my list. Um, and eventually um, I'm going to be adding to that list. It's a Google doc, so it's, it'll easily, you can easily um, add to it or I can. Um, I'll be doing it by region. So I'll have some for the Olympic Peninsula. I'll have some for the east side, things like that. Um, it just requires me to do a lot of digging, um, which I am more than willing to do. I just have to have time to do it. So, But I'll be sending that link out um, in the next week or so um, once I get a good amount on there for you guys to, to be, be able to go out and survey. And... Yeah, and we'll send out the list of submissions that we've received so far, just so everyone can fact check and make sure that we actually received their submissions or if there's an issue um, with our database. Okay. Any other questions, Steve, Brad, you got anything? No, Nick, excellent meeting. Thanks a lot. It's great. Thank you. No. Good stuff. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Nick. Right. Thank Have you. a good one, everyone. Take All care. right. Take care.
All right, Steve and Brad, I'm going to stop sharing this real quick. Okay, let's see. I know.